Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and today we crash test the Icon Striker Rig. Fun fact, this is the preferred blouse for 90% of the world's mercenaries. It also hijacks your wallet for $350 and steals its chest and back plates from the Icon Striker vest, which costs half as much. This is also the only under jacket armor that literally nobody has ever worn underneath a jacket. That's because the striker rig makes my pecs look so good. And by my pecs, I mean Brian F9's pecs. I haven't seen the inside of a gym since high school. Now, waterproofing is not a fair test for a jacket that's 75% stretch mesh, but we score everything on an extremely scientific nine point scale. So all the same, the striker rig is gonna need to embarrass itself and see. <laughs> Failure, that thing motivational posters refer to as a stepping stone to success. Well, in this case, it's a stepping stone to getting shot, because our next test is puncture strength, where we fire a BB, a lead pellet, and a penetrating pellet at 500 feet per second. I'm going to put three into the stretch mesh, and then three into the armor plate. So all three shots made it through the mesh layer. I'm pretty sure that this penetrating pellet's probably embedded somewhere near Brian F9's liver, which is less than ideal. Up on the armor plate though, we did stop all three shots. I guess we'll call that a half success. Now, spine protection. It is easily the most important and the most disappointing part of the striker rig. You see, I would expect a CE level two certification for such an enormous piece of plastic with D3O viscoelastic inserts. When it doesn't have one. In the same way, I would also expect a dragon scale design to actually limit movement in the wrong direction. I'm not sure why Icon didn't do better on this. Probably they were too busy designing logos. So we've already heard my insults, and there's the injury. More than 100 Gs. Huh, more than 100 Gs again. I'm actually surprised that failed. Chest armor is hilarious. First Icon ran out of D3O, so there isn't any behind this pad. And then they ran out of plastic, so they just molded a tiny little shield and then colored in the rest with a similar looking textile. But at least they wrote protect us on the front. I'm sure that's gonna help a lot. Oh no, that is very confusing. The Protect Us badge must not have worked for some reason. Now maybe I forgot to say the magic word. Half mark. That'll be the magic word when it comes to abrasion resistance. Are you ready to see me grind through the striker rig's chassis? <laughs> Done. But watch me grind through one of the armor plates. It takes a minute and 21 seconds until Brian F9 starts losing skin. He can't even ride a motorcycle that long, let alone crash one for a minute and 21 seconds. So we get yet another half point for abrasion resistance. I'm starting to think that the striker rig is only half a decent jacket. One, two, three plastic plates with a D3O backing, and yet somehow more than 100 Gs failing grade for elbow protection. Welcome to the burn unit, where we test fire resistance, and it looks like hydro dry is actually pretty good. Oh, uh, there's D3O in there, you can already smell it. it. Smells like oranges a bit, it actually does when you burn D3O. Let's go up to the plastic. Nothing exciting going on there. Again. This is biofoam on the waist belt. Whoa, that stuff is, whoo, that's flammable. Now I go for the main chassis here is stretch mesh. And no surprises, you get through that super easily. This stuff is nice though. It doesn't have as much uh, tension as a lot of uh, similar jackets do, so it reduces arm pump. It's nice, it doesn't wrap up too tightly there. So one trip to the burn unit and we are essentially left with a collection of impact protectors. The mesh chassis had no fire resistance whatsoever, just burned up and vanished almost instantly. By contrast, the armored bits, well, they actually did pretty well. 
And that makes sense since what you're paying for here is essentially some mediocre impact protectors and not much else. I guess we'll call that another half point. If I may draw your attention to the back protector, we noticed quite a significant build quality issue today, which was these rivets that hold the dragon scales in place, and they have quite a knack for popping out. We lost a lot of those. The other thing we noticed, which is quite rare, is that the impact protectors they actually fractured apart during some of the tests, which we don't normally see, and that might be why they did worse than I expected. So, a failing grade for build quality rounds out Fort 9's 9 tests. If you've been tracking all right, you'll know that the Icon Striker Rig scored one and a half Fort 9s out of nine, which is terrible. But maybe not that terrible, considering our testing method was designed for regular motorcycle jackets and not whatever the hell a Striker Rig is. Next week, we have one of our most requested crash tests. Brian F9 here is sporting a regular pair of Wranglers and these Icon Overlord motorcycle jeans. And the question is, how safe are riding jeans when compared with regular denim? If you want to find out, consider subscribing our channel to not miss next week's video. And until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care.